Hey kids, today I'm going to talk about the Great Emu War. So here's what happened, right? Our story begins in Australia, home of the Upside Down Whopper. The year is 1932. A very large chunk of the country's population lives on homesteads, just putting seeds in the ground and waiting for food to show up, you know. But their lives are hard. Firstly, Australian soil kind of blows. It's pretty terrible for farming. Like on a scale from Margaret Thatcher's corpse to Octomom, Australia's soil is a solid Hillary Clinton infertility. Secondly, the whole Great Depression thing's going on, which automatically makes everything suck worse. And third, and possibly most important, is the emu infestation. These gangly dill holes were all over the place, just walking on crops and crapping on crops and crapping on walks and cropping on craps and crabbing on docks and captain on the rocks. You get the idea. So the government evaluated the situation. They were like, well, let's see. Let's weigh our options here. As a government, we could start spending even more money to secure the welfare of our citizens through the socioeconomic crisis, money that we barely even have. Or or, alternatively, we could just start fucking slaughtering emus, so at least it looks like we're helping. So that's what they did. Major GPW Meredith of the Australian military was put in command of the operation, and he had a total of two soldiers at his disposal, each of which had a light machine gun. Additionally, the pair was given a total of 10,000 rounds of ammunition to be spent on taking out emus. So on paper, that sounds like a piece of cake. They're basically just big turkeys on stilts, so how hard could it be? Well, apparently, pretty frickin' hard. Let me learn you kids a thing or two about emus. First of all, emus are tough as hell. Their bodies are basically like meat-laden tanks. They can definitely take a bullet or three and still keep running long enough to get away. Secondly, these fuckers have tactics. Like, guerrilla warfare, it ain't got shit on emu warfare. They start out in a big herd or flock or pod, I don't really know. Let me Google it. Okay, a group of emus is technically called a mob. So you got a big mob of emus, right? And as soon as they sense danger, they break up into a bunch of little mobs and start scattering scattering in every direction. So if you're spraying them down with a machine gun, you can't just whip it around all over the place. You have to focus your fire on one group at a time, meaning most of the others could get away pretty easily. I don't know if they had like a huddle beforehand or if this is just some coincidental product from their ridiculous bird minds, but it was effective either way. So between these two things, taking out the emus ended up being a huge struggle. Here's the story on what happened. So the crew went out in search of emus. The first time they found a mob, they started shooting before the guns were in range, so most of the emus got away. The second time, they waited until the emus were closer, but then the gun jammed, so most of the emus got away. And this sort of pattern went on for a while. At one point, they tried getting on the back of a truck first so they could chase down the mob, but the truck wasn't fast enough to catch up, and the ride was so bumpy that they couldn't aim properly, so most of the emus got away. By the time they got a fourth of the way through their ammo, after 2,500 shots, only 300 or so had been killed, which is tiny compared to the 20,000 birds said to be roaming the outback. At this point, they were like, alright, if I have to look at one more of these Jimmy legged big bird wannabes, I'm gonna start screaming, so you know what? Fuck it. Let the farmers handle it. Then the farmers were like, hey jackholes, we're still starving out here. You still haven't given us those subsidies you promised. We had to feed the kids fucking dingo meat, which, you know, it's a nice change of pace to have the kids eating the dingoes for once, but that's beside the point. Could you dicks keep at least trying to help us? Thanks. The guys were like, alright, don't get your bogans in a bundle, we'll keep going if only to prove a point. So they kept going, just finding mobs, thinning them out slightly, rinsing and repeat, until finally they only had like 100 bullets left. In total, the unit only had 986 confirmed kills. Some emus might have also died from their wounds after the fact, but still, a very large portion of the hordes was still alive. So the military was forced to surrender for real this time. Yes, that's right kids, the emus won the war. Of course, their victory didn't last too long, because after the failed operation, the government put out a bounty on the emus. And that worked pretty well. Something like 50,000 bounties ended up being cashed out over six months in 1934. So the lesson here, kids, is that if you want to commit mass murder, don't crowdfund, crowdsource. Anyway, till next time, I'm Salmonella, and thank you for watching.